Hello, I'm John Frost to a Topspin Tennis. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis on Casper Rude's forehand. It is a masterclass on technique. Enjoy. Before I get started, I have to give credit to PTSO. He shot this footage, got a link to his YouTube channel down below. Make sure you visit it and uh, check out his footage, give him some support. And Casper Rude's forehand, before we can initiate any stroke, the key is to any good stroke is really that split step. We've talked about this before. This is magic move number one. Helps with timing. Coming down on that ground, when you, when those feet set on the ground, he gets into a good athletic base. So notice that. One little golden nugget to keep in mind, those feet should be further apart than his shoulders. So you don't want to be coming down in their shoulder width apart. You want to be further apart than, than that so that you can get in this good athletic base and be ready to receive this incoming ball. Magic move number two, not talked about a lot. It's the setting of the grip. Chuck Tomlin and John Carpenter of Congruent Te Tennis talk about setting this right side. I'm going to take it a little further. We're going to set the grip. And I've been working on this with our son, Gianni. The setting of this grip, this non-hitting hand, I'm going to zoom in here. This non-hitting hand will actually assist in transitioning from a continental grip to rude semi-western, western grip. I'm not... Con completely sure on what grip he uses. It's kind of hard to see in the footage, but that left hand will assist. The right hand is relaxed and see how he gets into a palm down position here with that racket face. Notice the racket strings, how they're facing down towards the ground. So magic move number two is setting of the grip, using that left hand to help find the proper forehand grip. Let's look at magic move number three, and that's just the release of the non-hitting hand. Rude does a great job of the flow here with his arms. Probably takes him up a little higher than most people. I almost I relate this to having like helium arms. Notice how the arms are free flowing here. I believe this helps with his timing, his tempo, and the flow on the stroke. So it does a great job with that. His hands actually get above his shoulder here. So more so than guys like Djokovic, who maybe his hitting hand maybe gets just at shoulder level. But Casper takes him up a little higher than most. And then the release of that hand is going to be right around 3 o'clock. You want to make sure when you release, you're not releasing like at 2 o'clock. You want to make sure you don't release those hands too soon. So he does a great job of letting go with that non-hitting hand right around 3, 3.30. So it does a great job there. He does get a little bit of tilt here with his racket face. Not as much as someone like a Dominic Team or Carlos Alcaraz, but he does. That racket head is in front of his hands technically here, and that will assist with the lag and that swivel. Um, let's look at that loading phase. And here it is. This is a signature position here. I'm going to freeze the video so you can see. Look at the non-hitting hand. He does a great job there of extending that hand out. One thing to keep in mind is look at the ball and look at that hand. That ball will travel to the outside of that extended arm. That's going to help with spacing. If you're having problems that, that ball is getting too close to your body, you need to practice getting that non-hitting arm extended out to the side, and that will let you know how far away to get from the ball. I've talked about the signature 90-10 position. Notice how 90% of the weight is on his right foot and 10% is on the left foot. Chin is over his shoulder. That is a beautiful signature position here. He is balanced. He should be able to balance a book on his head I think in this situation, he can. Notice the racket face, how it's pointing back and to the ground. Signature masterclass on the loading position. Perfect, perfect position. Let's go ahead and look at the release and, the, and that, that swivel position here. Notice how the racket head is to the outside of the hand. He will swivel, it gets to the inside of the hand here. Got to be relaxed here, almost like a noodle arm. 
and that's where you get that whipping effect on the ball. Starts to open up his hips and shoulders. He's generating power from the ground up here. Beautiful, beautiful position, and let's look at that contact point. Contact point is going to be out in front, off that right foot, and notice now how his chin is over his right shoulder. It was over the left shoulder in the loading phase. Now that he's uncoiling, he is starting to open up and it's over his right shoulder and his chin is fixated on the contact point. Great job here. Racket head is below the ball. Tells you he's coming in from low to high and then he's gonna find that ball out in front. He compresses it, which a byproduct is just that that extension out, he pulls, compresses, pulls up and across, and then look at that finish. Notice where all the weight is now. It's all on his left foot. It tells you that he completely rotated here, has all that angular momentum. 10% of his weight is on his right foot, and then the finish is across his body. You wanna see how he got full rotation? Look at how his hips and shoulders now are facing the fence here, or his coach. So he completely rotated here. Masterclass, great job. I don't know if you guys realize this, but the majority of the people that watch these videos are not subscribers of the channel. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support. Have a great day.